Hey there, welcome to my YouTube talks. Did you know that the way we trade and value things has changed more in the last 50 years than in the previous 5,000? That's right. While your grandparents were busy haggling over goats and grain, we're now swiping our phones to pay for everything from coffee to cars. So is cash about to join the dinosaurs in extinction? Or will we be trading digital coins like Pokemon cards in the near future? Get ready to unravel this story from barter systems to the rise of Bitcoin and beyond. You won't want to miss this ride. Do me a favor, hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell before you leave. In the earliest days, before money even existed, people relied on barter, trading goods and services directly. Picture this, you've got a basket of apples, but you need a new fishing net. Well, you'd seek out a fisherman who has a net, but maybe wants some apples. This system, while straightforward, had significant drawbacks. What if the fisherman didn't even want apples? Or what if you needed change for your basket of apples? Bartering required a double coincidence of wants which is like trying to find two people who both want what the other has at the exact same moment. Talk about a logistical nightmare. To overcome the limitations of barter, societies began developing currency around 3000 BC. The first forms of money were commodities, items of value like salt, cattle, or grains. However, as civilizations advanced, the need for a more standardized medium arose. Enter the coin. The first metal coins were minted in Lydia, or also known as modern-day Turkey. At around 600 BC, these coins had specific weights and they were stamped with images, making them easily recognizable and widely accepted. This innovation not only simplified trade, but also created a sense of trust among traders. Fast forward to the Middle Ages, and we see the emergence of the gold standard. By this time, gold and silver had become the most trusted forms of currency. Why? Because they were durable, divisible, and let's be honest, shiny. Goldsmiths began issuing receipts for the gold they stored which people started using as money. This was like the world's first IOU, but it was much shinier and with a lot more value. Countries began tying their currencies to gold reserves, establishing a sense of stability in the economy. As trade expanded, carrying around heavy coins became impractical. So around the seventh century in China, the first paper money emerged. Yes, you heard that right. The Chinese were the trendsetters of currency once again. This innovation made transactions easier and allowed for larger trade volumes. Soon, European countries caught on and by the 17th century, banks began issuing their own notes. People could now walk around with a piece of paper that represented real wealth. With the rise of paper money came the establishment of banks. These institutions began to play a crucial role in the economy, offering loans, managing deposits, and facilitating trade. The Medici family in Italy, for example, turned banking into an art form, literally. They financed artists and projects that shaped the Renaissance. The concept of interest emerged, and suddenly money could grow. This was the beginning of modern finance as we know it, paving the way for stock markets and investments. Moving into the 20th century, we see the advent of credit. Credit cards made their debut in the 1950s, revolutionizing how people spent money. Imagine being able to buy a pair of shoes today and paying for them next month. <laughs> what a time to be alive. The first universal credit card the Diners Club card was introduced in 1950, and it felt like a VIP pass to the shopping world. Suddenly, consumers could make purchases without having cash on hand, leading to a surge in consumerism. But with great power comes great responsibility. 
because that buy now, pay later mindset can lead to some serious debt hangovers. As technology advanced, so did our money. The late 20th century saw the rise of electronic banking and ATMs, making it easier to access cash without entering a bank. Remember the first time you saw an ATM? It was like magic. Just insert a card, type a few buttons, and boom, cash appears. Then came online banking, which allowed people to manage their finances from the comfort of their couches. You could pay bills, transfer money, check your balance, all without ever even putting on a pair of pants. The convenience was really unmatched, but it also brought new challenges like online security and identity theft. Always remember to change your passwords because password 123 or 000 isn't as secure as you might think. Now let's fast forward to the 21st century and the birth of cryptocurrency. In 2009, Bitcoin was introduced by an anonymous person or possible group known as Satoshi Nakamoto. This digital currency was designed to operate without a central authority, allowing for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. The idea was a decentralized form of money that was not controlled by banks or governments. If you thought money couldn't get any more interesting, think again. Bitcoin operates on a technology called blockchain. This is a public ledger that records all transactions. Imagine a giant notebook that everyone can see, but no one can erase. This transparency is what gives Bitcoin its integrity and prevents fraud. Since Bitcoin's launch, thousands of alternative cryptocurrencies or altcoins have emerged, each with its own unique features and purposes. Bitcoin has seen wild price fluctuations, going from mere cents to thousands of dollars in just over a decade. This volatility has attracted investors, traders, and even those get-rich-quick enthusiasts. While some people have struck it rich, others have learned the hard way that investing in cryptocurrency can be really risky. So, what does the future hold for money? As we move further into the digital age, cash is becoming less common. Many countries are exploring central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, which combine the benefits of digital currency with the stability of government backing. Imagine a world where you can send money across the globe instantly without fees and without waiting for a bank to open. It sounds like a dream, but it's becoming a reality. Mobile payment apps are also on the rise, allowing us to pay for everything from coffee to concert tickets with just a tap. It's convenient, but let's be honest, if you ever lost your phone, you know the true meaning of panic. So what's next for money? Will we be using holographic cash, trading in virtual reality coins, or just swapping emojis? Let me know your wildest ideas. Each stage in this journey reflects not just a change in how we transact, but also changes in society, technology, and trust. Money is not just a means to buy things. It's a representation of value that shapes our economy and influences our daily lives. So whether you're a Bitcoin enthusiast or still hoarding those pennies, remember that money is as much about relationships and trust as it is about numbers. Thank you for joining me on this wild ride through the history of money. If you enjoyed this video, join me for the next one in the psychology of money. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell along the way.